Hey folks, thanks for watching my monologue. I'd like to encourage you to visit Guns Etc. They're strong supporters of our president and the principles our country was founded upon. Guns Etc. is 10,200 square feet and it's a firearm lover's paradise. And for all your online firearms needs, just click on GunsEtc.com. And if you like my monologues, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks. Well, welcome back, Monday, March 9th, 2020. We commence today as with our text coming from the wisdom of Solomon, who wrote in Proverbs, quote, Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. Think on that for a few moments. Hang with the wise, you become wise. Hang with fools and you become dumb. As you know, or at least as I've spoken of many times, this line is also true of character or virtue, to teach children character or virtue, the best way to do so is to put them in the presence of someone of character or virtue, and the opposite being true as well. We come to this from many fronts, and the examples of it proliferate beyond our ability to explain in just three hours, but I wanted to use a few items in the news as a springboard on this to perhaps help explain our culture and our politics just now. Yesterday was International Women's Day. The only reason I knew that was because I saw an official message, tweet, on Twitter, from Twitter. It read plainly and simply this, quote, Not today, men, close quote. I had to look up why the honchos at Twitter would post such a tweet. It was in honor of International Women's Day. Men, shut up. That was the message. It seems like a very odd way to honor humanity or equality by discounting and silencing, censoring, really, the humanity and equality of others. So what is that message? Women, we honor your humanity and equality by completely silencing, erasing, deleting other be human beings who by dint of simply the accident or design of birth are born with chromosomes different from yours? Can you imagine a tweet that said, not today, women? Of course not, because it would be discriminatory. discriminatory. And at the most, very minimum, rude. But not today, men. Does that mean women cannot compete in a fair or equal field or marketplace or marketplace of ideas? As one smart woman journalist wrote, as a woman, this is yikes. I'd have much rather seen women celebrated in a positive way than telling men to shut up. This doesn't accomplish anything. It only makes the lives of women worse through division, close quote. I don't think very many people on the left think this way. They are in constant social war, and the task is not respect or equality. It's not even victory, because they will not tell you what victory looks like. It is rather this. Surrender to everything on their constantly shifting agenda, and defeat, silence, truly defeat and silence anyone who dissents. So it was not a surprise, really, when I was then inspired to look up the ori origins of International Women's Day. Anyone want to guess? The title gives some of it away, but here's the sourced Wikipedia answer. Quote, After the Socialist Party of America organized a Woman's Day in New York City on February 28, 1909, German delegates Clara Zetkin and Kate Dunker and others proposed at the 1910 International Socialist Women's Conference that a special Women's Day be organized annually. After women gained suffrage in Soviet Russia in 1917, March 8th became a national holiday there. The day was then predominantly celebrated by the socialist movement in communist countries until it was adopted by the feminist movement in 1967. The United Nations began celebrating the day in 1977. Well, at least now we know why censorship, rather than equality and parity, is the order of the celebration. It is a socialist communist effort. Now, before I go on, we on the right generally not only esteem women, we venerate them. Is there a format in the entire United States that praises such strong women as Golda Meir and Margaret Thatcher and Jean Kirkpatrick and others than conservative talk radio? Indeed, I'd bet if you heard qu quotes or clips from any of them any time in the last 20 years or so, it would have been on shows just like this one. But you know what's funny? These women are never saluted or praised in feminist circles. I'll go one step further. If you know who Tulsi Gabbard is, you probably know it from her appearances on Fox News. 
You hear Elizabeth Warren and others lament there are no female candidates for president. It's not true. What is true is that the Democratic National Committee changed the rules at least twice to keep Tulsi, a strong woman, off the debating stage. Who was it that the other day noted the DNC's latest efforts for the Phoenix debates to silence her and keep her off stage were? It was they conjured so that she would not show up the feminist claims that women have to always be victims and so that she would not show up the age and whiteness of the main candidates, Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden. But the Democratic Party does have a minority female candidate running for the presidency. It's just that Hillary Clinton and Elizabeth Warren won't admit it, and the DNC won't allow her to debate. She could have been on the debate stage given the previous DNC rules. They have changed them now twice to keep her off. As I've said again and again, the left, and by that I also include today's Democratic Party, doesn't care about women's rights or sexual abuse or sex discrimination or racism. They care about conservative or Republican sex discrimination and racism. Else, why did Megyn Kelly have to be fired, but the governor of Virginia is still the governor of Virginia? Remember Kelly's crime? She said she didn't think it was wrong as a child to dress in blackface on Halloween. She apologized and did a show on the history of blackface. No evidence she ever did it herself. Remember what the governor of Virginia's crime was? He actually did wear blackface or a KKK costume. He won't tell us which, but it was one or the other. Kelly lost her job. The governor of Virginia was protected and still has his. Or one might want to think about Bill Clinton. So long as his policies were right, he would be protected. Or Ted Kennedy, or Harvey Weinstein, or Jeffrey Epstein, or Roman Polanski. Hollywood is all in for them. Donald Trump, to them, is the problem. Anti-Semitism? Ask yourselves why Ilan Omar and Rashida Tlaib get free passes, while Donald Trump, the grandfather and father of Orthodox Jews, is routinely labeled an anti-Semite. It's not racism or discrimination of any kind or sexism the left and the Democratic Party care about. It's the left and the Democratic Party they care about. They place party over principle, and that, at least to me, is a retrograde view of politics and principle. By the way, let us focus for a moment on what women's rights the left is willing to stand up for. Muslim women's rights? Not at all. No, you see, that would be to breach the green-red axis. That would be ethnocentric or Islamophobic. When Ilan Omar was asked about female genital mutilation by a woman, she verbally attacked the woman. When reformist and expatriate Iranian women like Masi Alenajad or Erika Khazari say something about Iran throwing acid in the face of women or the forced hijab, they are attacked by the left and their families are imprisoned in Iran. I translated from the French an interview Masi Alenajad did saying this, I call on all feminists in Sweden and France or the Women's March in the U.S. to condemn the compulsory hijab. Some prefer to remain silent, pretending not to pretend to save Iranian women. Seriously? We are not asking you to defend human rights. Paging Ilan Omar, Elena Jad went on, quote, If you can't control your head and what you put on it, they'll never let you decide what you put in it. The requirement to wear the hijab is one of the pillars of the religious dictatorship. The compulsory hijab is not a minor subject. It is gender apartheid. The people who obsess over Islamophobia are usually people who have never lived in a Muslim country, often Western feminists who have no experience with Sharia law. I claim the right to oppose all of this, the right to fear Sharia law, she wrote, paging Linda Sarsour in the Women's March. You know, it was easy to go after apartheid in South Africa, and we were all right, we were correct to do it. But it was easy, I say, because it was white and a male autocracy we were fighting. But unless we're willing to march and stand for women's rights because they are women and not coddle and ignore human rights and women's rights because a medieval religious and minority practice immunizes such claims, we're back to the left and Democrats caring not about the thing, the issue, women's rights in this case, but rather only the women's rights that are affected by some violations, not all, because we can't be seen as anti Islam, which would of course mean we can't criticize the most anti-female culture in the world. What absurdity. 
attack Israel, which has female prime ministers and defense ministers, but protect regimes that compel discrimination because, lo and behold, they hate Israel and America, and blame sexism for not winning the presidency here, but discriminate against women who don't toe the party line of victimization and support for Hillary Clinton, even though they are Democrats, paging Tulsi Gabbard. But there's something else worth saying, too, so long as I'm getting myself in trouble today. We said, you go, girl, as a society, and look, the girls went. The men, however, are the ones with real problems. Now, women have overtaken men in the workforce, in the labor force here, by over 100,000 workers. In higher education, women are leaving men in the dust, both in enrollment, attainment of degrees, and not dropping out. Men outpace women in substance abuse, suicide, obesity, and video game uh, addiction. But why are we surprised by this? To borrow from C.S. Lewis, in a sort of ghastly simplicity, we remove, we remove the organ and demand the function. We make men without chests and expect of them virtue and enterprise. We laugh at honor and are shocked to find traitors in our midst. We castrate and bid the geldings be fruitful. So goodbye, dads, and goodbye, masculinity. Call men toxic for being men, make fun of dads for being dads, and tell them to shut up. You think that has no consequences? Sir Thomas More said in A Man for All Seasons, I show you the times. You know what we probably need? An International Men's Day. But let it be sponsored by non-socialists, please. If for no other reason, so we don't censor anyone or tell them to shut up or to borrow from Donna Brazil, go to hell. Because we have our legitimate opinions too, and they don't depend or rely on our immutable characteristics, chromosome count, or political preference. I'm Seth Liebson. We'll be right back.